Hello everybody and welcome to Brewing TV. I'm Chip Walton with Northern Brewer. The shadowy figure lurking here in the background is my coworker, Vaughn Stewart. The two of us are um, concocting something deviant for Hot Madness 2012. Actually, two somethings deviant for Hot Madness 2012. That's actually gonna be next episode. What's going down in this episode is we're taking you to the source of our Hop Madness, a place called Hop Union in Yakima, Washington. I recently tagged along as Northern Brewer founder and president Chris Farley headed out to Yakima and we met up with Hop Union CEO Don Bryant. We got a personal tour of the facility, checked out the pelletizing process, and we were able to hand select some varieties of hops from the 2012 crop for Northern Brewer. Very cool stuff. Come with us as we learn a thing or two about hops from inside Hop Union. All for hop, hop for all. Woo! dealers and growers have worked for 150 years. Whatever the growers grew, that's what dealers would buy when they're out the route, and they'd, they'd just sell whatever the growers had available. Well, the, the change in paradigm that we took is to go out and work with the growers proactively, so years in advance, we get them to change what they're growing right. so we can marry up. So you look for the first time ever, uh, we used to run out of half the things by August 15th, like before it got here. I remember, I remember well, the days, so. And it's still, with the craft growth, there's still a lot of that, because we, we grew by about 35% in pounds last year, and we were out of 50% of our items halfway through the year. So, I mean, so, you, so what about the proliferation of varieties? I mean, is that something that's uh, really affecting ah, your yes. business? Ah, yes, let me show you. <laughs> Downstairs, uh, if you go back uh, 10 years ago, we had three varieties in 80% of our business. Right. Now we have 140 Nice 80-20 varieties. rule, you can have uh, 15 varieties with three varieties taking. Uh, that was nice when it was <laughs> like that, not like that anymore. Does the 80-20 rule even apply anymore? Or are no. people just buying everything? Right now we've got, uh, everybody's demand is for whatever they can't get. Right. So the, cra so the craziest thing is, all the stuff we have, no one wants, even though it's equally as good as the things that we don't have. So we've started sourcing, like even the Australia, New Zealand, uh, not just Czechoslovakia, but various clones in Czechoslovakia. England, uh, we've gone from carrying three varieties that were all the business, to now we have 38 varieties, and plus we're involved with their breeding programs. So uh, we have uh, almost 500 cultivars of uh, experimental hops, and almost every one of them, we're literally growing for one or two brewers to test them out before we go live. Well, now we've got 139 various crop years we manage, and we have a little over 2,000 brewers. We manage individual inventories for every one of them. So, so these are spoken for, so I can't just go and grab me some Simcoe. <laughs> well, if you got a big suitcase, we could pull that <laughs> off. But. <laughs> Uh, but, but these even, are all spoken, this is inventory that's managed for other people. This particular rack is just for small brewer inventory, so that a guy can drop a pallet, and it's by crop gear, everything from 011 or 02, 10 or 11 at this point, but okay. pretty soon it'll be not, uh, 11 and 12. So the next edition is that QR code, so even this box of Brewer's Gold, somebody can scan the QR code and look at literally how many gallons of water went into growing that. And that'll be encoded so, right in the little QR code? Yep. Everything, Brilliant. everything about it. So, so um, transparency, that's a good... 100% transparency. That's so great. even when we get over to the lab, you'll see, we now, uh, we spent a quarter million dollars last year updating the lab, and we work with growers all over the world to let them know ideal harvest dates and dry matters. Then we do BVs on every single lot that comes in, both before, uh, before pelleting, after pelleting, and time throughout, so you have the deterioration rates. And now we've added beer testing with GC gas chromatograph, so we can show literally if a brewer's getting an off flavor or a flavor they like, maybe what oils drive that right. and what soil drives that oil. Very much like grapes, the uh, 
25 years ago when I got into the wine business, it was all about a bunch of uh, a bunch of farmers trying to grow something with an artisan passion to grow it. Then over the years, there's been so much consolidation where now many, many big wineries are owned by luggage companies from England, etc. It's no longer the little local grower. Well, the hop industry is probably the last bastion of that in America. Well, people are truly artisans. They've had it in their family for 150 years. And there's a passion unlike any other agricultural product I've ever seen for really people caring about every single box of what it, what it holds. So there's probably no single bigger determining factor, good beer to great beer. These just came in a few days ago. The way all hops were Where are stored, these coming in from? When you say they came in a few days ago, they're coming Well, we in have from... five uh, warehouses off-site. Okay. We've gotten so big, it used to all be here, so we'll all have to store somewhere around six million pounds off-site. And so we have to monitor, uh, you know, how they store it, temperature, traceability, etc. cetera. Uh, Hop Union, when we took over the company in its current form in 2001, did about a million pounds a year of hops. This rack holds two million pounds of hops. So the one rack is bigger than the whole company was just 10 years ago. Wow. So, and it's all the proliferation of craft. The benefits are huge in terms of residual oxygen. If you test these, these are one-tenth the oxygen of what the commercial growers are getting. So you're getting about 0.3 to 0.5%. Industry standard is 5%. So the quality is much better, speed's much better, and never in history as a home brewer had a better quality product than the commercial brewer. Right. And so yeah, we're pretty excited about that. This, this is a group of our Ben brewers from Cascade Lakes and from uh, ten, uh, to ten Barrel. And, uh, doing what's really traditional here in the Northwest, is making sure you get the absolute best cut of hops to make your beer. So literally using the sensory, sensory analysis to make sure that the aromas and flavors complement their beers. Many of these brewers will send up like a recipe and we'll do their brew, because when you rub them, they can smell good or bad. Well, the flavor of the hops and the character of the hops when they're cooked is so much different Changes than, significantly, you know, than when they're sure. raw. So the other thing is the combination. So some of the flavors uh, coming out from the breeding programs are so intense now that you really have to learn how to manage it. So it's not like the traditional noble hops that were very, very delicate. So with the style of especially West Coast beers, big IPAs and double and triple and quadruple and sextuple IPAs, that how do you, how do you uh, best complement the flavors? So we have uh, three brewers on staff that will do different experimental plots. I'm not sure what they have up here, experimental brews. We just did one, we were looking, because of the Amarillo shortage, what best complements Amarillo. So we picked a, uh, a uh, topaz variety from um, Australia to be able to do a uh, crossover. It's one of the best ones so, so far, but, but we've probably tried 25 different brews to be able to figure out how do we, how do we come up with a solution for the Amarillo shortage. Oh man, no. that smells great. Way different, way more intense, way, way citrusy. Many of these experimentals will do, uh, they're seven years before they go commercial that many large brewers have been brewing with. So like Sierra Nevada has been brewing with Mosaic for three, four years now. So uh, it seems so strange that the big brewers would be experimental. Well, and that that's where the experimentation would occur. They're looking for point of differentiation. Right. So it's kind of like the home brewer. You have stages. When the guy first starts in home brewing, he wants just the basic kit. Let me make a pale ale, and I'm just hoping, happy if I don't screw it up. Right. Then after he's done that for a while, a year or two, now it's he wants to experiment on his own and come up with that really exotic thing to wow his friends. We have a thousand new craft brewers this year. Right. There's only two thousand. <laughs> So, so mathematically, yeah, right. half of them haven't been around for a year. So to them, just to do a basic recipe, when they were a home brewer a year ago, they're now commercial. So, and then we have the other folks trying to differentiate. So even, it's the same methodology that a guy like uh, Sierra Nevada and New Belgium, they're more fascinated with how do I come up with the next iteration right. than of just how do I buy more of what I've always bought. Who has the edge in uh, getting great hops? Is it home brewers or is it commercial brewers? That's a tough one to answer because there's plenty of good hops to go around usually. But I think the, the advances are much more significant in the home brewer side. 
Uh, if you look at, for example, this is a gas chromatograph that's looking at all the oil contents of every single major hop that we, we produce by grower. So literally the, the quality standards are so much higher now. And what we find is things like uh, our lab that does beer testing. We thought initially it was going to be all the craft brewers, but it's very heavily influenced by home brewers, guys that really care and are passionate about what they do. And even in, in the hop production now, the quality and sophistication of the equipment that produces the hop pellets for home brewers is probably better than the commercial guys have ever had. So there really could never be a better time to be a home brewer than right now. And they're clearly the future of what craft brewers are. They almost all start every, as Every home craft brewers. brewer starts out as a home brewer. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It's where they catch the fever. <laughs> so, <laughs> Like Don says, it's a great time to be a beer maker. Home brewers and craft brewers alike have access to great hops, thanks to advances in quality and a concentration on producing excellent products. Not just the newest alpha acid monster hop, but high quality hops that taste and smell good. The fresh 2012 crop will be arriving at Northern Brewer shortly. We're certainly excited about that. Northern Brewer and Brewing TV would like to thank Don Bryant and everyone at Hop Union for their time and courtesy during our visit. Coming up in the next episode of Brewing TV, we put Hop Union hops to work, and I mean a lot of hops. It's Hop Madness 2012 as Vaughn, Badass Brian Adams, and I go off the deep end on two giant beers. We're making an Australian October Ale inspired by Mitch Steele's new IPA book. And then we double hop back a double IPA through nearly two and a half pounds of Simcoe and Centennial. Prepare yourself for hop madness. Posts online November 2nd.